Hello, I'm Stefano Cresce and I'm presenting personalized interventions for online moderation for the Blue Sky Ideas track. This is a conjoint work with Amaury Trujillo and Tiziano Fagni of the Institute of Informatics and Telematics of the Italian National Research Council. Social media are extremely useful for a number of reasons, but we know that they are also affected by many issues, such as the spread of mis- and disinformation, the presence of many misbehaving users, including toxic users that harass others and use hateful speech, and the frequent formation of eco-chambers that contribute to increasing polarization and radicalization, to name but a few well-known issues. Because of these problems, and in order to maintain safe online environments, online platforms moderate content and users by applying a wide array of moderation interventions. Now, all of the interventions applied so far followed a one-size-fits-all approach, meaning that each intervention was applied and presented in the same way for all users. For example, uh, many platforms attached uh, uh, labels to disputed or problematic posts during the COVID-19 pandemic in an effort to curb vaccine disinformation. And in these cases, all users have been shown the same labels. As another example, Twitter recently sent messages to prompt toxic users to reconsider their offensive tweets, as in this case right here. And also in this case, all prompted users received the exact same message. And of course, when a piece of content or a user is removed from a platform, uh, it is not visible for anyone. So all of these moderation interventions were applied in the same way for all users. However, uh, since we started evaluating the effects of such interventions, we realized that many of those interventions have unsatisfactory results. Some interventions produce a mixture of desired and undesired effects. For example, Twitter and Reddit interventions against toxicity actually cause the subset of users to become even more toxic. Other interventions had no effects at all, and some interventions even produced opposite effects to those desired. So they actually exacerbated the problems that they were trying to solve. One of the limitations of the current approach to online moderation is that relatively little research was done in this area and platforms rushed to deploy many interventions based on common sense and intuition, rather than grounding their interventions on scientifically sound approaches. Then in addition to this, Interventions deployed so far were generic, in spite of the fact that each user might react differently based on its personal characteristics. This plot shows how a community of Reddit users reacted to a ban. The large spread of points in the scatter plot shows the heterogeneity in user reactions, up to the point that many users reacted in completely opposite ways, which obviously makes it difficult to obtain the desired effects with these moderation interventions. So, we have users with different personalities, interests, and characteristics that are shown the same intervention, which causes the, the different reactions that they have. So uh, what we've seen uh, is that the current approach to online moderation neglects individual differences and the advantages of personalization. However, from psychology and the social sciences, we know that the effects of interventions depend on the personal characteristics of the users. And in line with these theories, recent results in computer science, such as the ones that we, we just saw before, demonstrated that different users have different reactions to the same interventions. Finally, we've also witnessed many successful applications of personalization, for example, in the context of recommender systems. Now, all of this suggests that we should drastically change our approach to online moderation by switching from generic to personalized moderation interventions, or PMIs. So what do we need in order to design and deploy interventions that are personalized to the characteristics of the users to which they are applied? Well, surely we need to perform user modeling by inferring the relevant social and personality characteristics of the users from their online public traces, uh, such as, for example, from the actions that they perform on the social media. Then we need to design many different interventions for the same problem such as different warning messages to dissuade toxic users from sharing hateful posts. And each of these different interventions should be designed to be particularly effective for a specific type of users. Finally, we need to be able to match each user to the most effective intervention for her or him. Now, the combination of these three macro steps will allow us to go beyond generic interventions and to deploy PMIs. 
Since there are several different steps involved in the development of PMIs, many contributions will need to be, uh, are needed from multiple scientific communities. For example, social and cognitive scientists can contribute to realize better models of the online users or to propose the best ways in which to moderate the different types of users. Then techniques from human computer interaction can be leveraged to understand the best way to present the PMIs to the users. New machine and deep learning models can be developed to automate some of these tasks, thus making uh, online moderation scalable. And then we will need statistical techniques to validate the effectiveness of PMIs, for example, causal inference techniques. The advantages of personalized moderation interventions with respect to the generic ones are multifold starting from their greatly increased effectiveness. But in addition to this, PMIs will also contribute to making the process of online moderation more user-centered, nuanced, and transparent to the users. And this in turn will help making platforms more accountable for their moderation, which is something they currently lack. Of course, developing PMIs also entails a number of challenges, starting from the ethical challenges of performing user modeling and dealing with personal data. And this mandates the adoption of anonymization and privacy preserving techniques. Then in addition to this, uh, there will also be the challenges at the intersection between ethics and machine learning. For example, PMIs will need to be explainable and fair, of course. Other technical challenges will arise uh, related to the validation of PMIs, since uh, validating PMIs will likely require the collaboration or the participation of the platforms themselves, and we know that obtaining the collaboration of big platforms is oftentimes problematic. And finally, PMIs will essentially represent a more technologically advanced tool with respect to what we currently have. But we know that ultimately solving the issues of social media necessitates more than just technological tools. So for example, independently of the available tools, the platforms might not be willing to strongly moderate their users for fear of losing them and in turn of losing also the revenues that many users generate. And also new technologies such as PMIs can be, used, can be also misused. So PMIs could possibly be used to manipulate rather than to moderate users. This pretty much concludes my presentation on personalized moderation interventions. Thank you for your attention and please do get in contact with me if you have questions. Thank you.